welcome to the digital transformation forum where we talk everything about digital transformation today's video is all about team center file management system if you are working with large volumes of engineering data and documents then you know how challenging it can be to manage access and share these files efficiently that's where team center fms comes in with features like fcc and fsc that help optimize file management and improve system performance in this video we will explain what these features are how they work and best practices for using them in real world scenarios first let's talk about team center fms which is a component of team center plm software it's designed to manage store retrieval and distribution of product data files with fms you can store and manage all types of product related data including cat files schematics specifications and other engineering documents this centralized approach makes it easier to find and share files across teams and departments in simple words file management system fms downloads and uploads file data for the rich client embedded viewer and life cycle visualization fms provides the following functions volume server for file management shared server level performance cache for shared data access between multiple users client based private user cache for rich clients transient data store mechanism for transporting reports plm xml and other non volume data between the web and client tier in four tier architecture fms caching enables placing the data close to the user while maintaining a centralized file volume and data store fms requires installation of fms server cache fsc and fms client cache fcc components the fsc components provides a server process and file cache for team center server host whereas the fcc components provides a client process and file cache for the rich client on user workstations in our previous video we have shown the complete architecture with different component of active workspace if you have not yet checked that video out please click on the card above so how do these features work in real world scenario let's consider an example of a company that's developing a new product they might use team center fms to manage all the design data related to that product including cat files now let us assume that a client is searching for a data and hence he won't find it in his local fcc as it was never accessed before similarly the request further goes to the fsc via fms master service and it won't find the data over there as well in the end the request further goes to the volume server where it will find the data once the request has found the data in the volume server it generates a fms ticket this ticket acts as a token to cross check if the data is up to date or whether it has been modified by someone else we will see how fms ticket works shortly but for now understand that it creates the copy of the fms ticket in fsc and fcc respectively now let us consider a second scenario that without clearing the cache if the user tries to access the same data the request first goes to the fcc which is user local file management client cache it will find the fms ticket for that data then the request validate this token with that of the fsc file management server cache system if the data is not modified by anyone then the fms ticket validation of token will result in a successful handshake concluding that the data within the user fcc is latest and without fetching it again from the fsc or volume server it will be loaded from local cache thereby improving the time to fetch the data we will now consider the final scenario that before the user access the data someone else has modified it now when there is a handshake between the token the validation fails as the ticket residing in the user local fcc will not be the same as that of fsc hence the request now will move further to the fsc here same mechanism kicks in that is the fms ticket validation between fsc and volume server if this token validation succeeds then the handshake is successful meaning that the fms ticket residing in the fsc is latest and request can be served by fetching the data from fsc thereby saving time to fetch the data from the server while serving the request from fsc the fsc will share its latest fms ticket token and, and create a copy in the fcc hence if the user again tries to fetch the data he or she should be able to load them fast locally provided that the data is not modified by someone else 
We hope you found this overview helpful in understanding how these features interact with each other and how they help improve the overall system performance. Before we conclude on today's video, we would like to leave you with best practices we suggest. So here are a few. Choose an appropriate cache size based on the number of user and the amount of data being accessed. A large cache size will allow more data to be cached but may also consume more memory and CPU resources locally. Optimize the cache purge setting. Configure the cache purge setting to ensure that old or interactive data is automatically purged from the cache. This can free up valuable cache space and improve performance. Use cache prefetching to load frequently accessed data into the cache ahead of time. This can help reduce latency and improve performance for frequently accessed data. Adjust the cache expiration setting to ensure that the data stays in the cache for an appropriate length of time. Longer cache expiration times may improve performance but could result in stale data being served from the cache. Monitor cache performance regularly to identify any issues or bottlenecks. This can help you identify performance issues before they affect users. Use multiple FSC servers to distribute the cache load and improve performance. This can also provide redundancy in case of server failure. Configure the cache compression setting to ensure that the data is compressed efficiently. This can help reduce cache size and improve performance. Use FCC to cache frequently accessed data on the client side. This can help reduce network latency and improve performance for remote users. We do not recommend setting this value to more than 4 GB as in our experience that has adverse effect on the performance while loading huge assemblies. Establish file security and access rights to ensure that only authorized users can access specific files. Establish groups that reflect job responsibility and assign access rights accordingly. Regularly backup files to protect against data loss. Set up automated backup schedule to ensure that files are backed up regularly. Monitor cache usage regularly to identify any issues or bottleneck. This can help you identify performance issues before they affect users. Use automated data archiving to move older, less frequently accessed data to lower cost storage. This frees up space on your primary storage and reduces cost. Plan for scalability as your organization grows. Ensure that your network and server infrastructure can support the large volume of data and traffic generated by Team Center FMS. That's it for this video on Team Center FMS, FCC, and FSC. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos on PLM software and related topics. Thank you for watching this video and see you in the next one.